Hey, what's going on? Peter Mato here from Eagles.com. And we have a special guest today, um, Kane Callis, son of the late, great Harry Callis, which you all know. Kane has recently uh, recorded a, a new version, his version of a uh, of the Eagles fight song. Kane, how you doing? And, and what made you uh, want to record this uh, new version? Or It's not really a new version. I mean, it's, it's your special twist to it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a cover of the Eagles fight song. Thanks for having me on, Pete. Yeah. Happy to be here. Um, I actually got the inspiration because I'm I'm I was making an album and uh, the album is going to be released in in April. The title of the album is High Hopes, and it's music that I grew up listening to, music that my dad loved. I'm so excited about that. It's a tribute to him, but also a tribute to the city of Philadelphia. And I thought, you know, therefore a cool song to put on there would be, of course, the um, Eagles e Eagles victory song or the Eagles fight song. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I recorded that one, and it's a really cool recording it's you know i decided to do like kind of a march style with it mm -hmm. um so it has this like john philip sousa vibe to it and uh now with the eagles making it into the um, nfc championship game uh mm -hmm. it seems like a, an appropriate time to uh, go ahead and release it as a single get people hyped up yeah i listened to it i liked it i, I liked the little spin on it um it was very like it was like a classic sound to it a really cool uh rendition of it um so we all know that your family, big Phillies, um, like your dad, you know, a legend um, in the city, nationally legend. Um, were you also big Eagles fans? Because you grew up in the area. And um, obviously, you can't get away from all the sports here. I mean, I mean the, the amazing thing about Philadelphia is we have the best sports fans in the world, right? And so I grew up at the ballpark at, at, the, at the Phillies games. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, well, maybe it's just a Philadelphia Phillies thing. But it's absolutely not. I mean, it's an Eagles thing as well. And even, you know, when I was growing up, I remember asking my dad one time, why is everybody at the Eagles or at the Phillies game uh, chanting E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles, right? Um, yep. So it's kind of ubiquitous throughout the city. I mean, we just have the best sports fans in the world. And of course, growing up in the area, you know, I'm a huge Phillies fan, but also a huge Eagles fan, Sixers, Flyers, all the way across the board. Yeah. And right now it's pretty easy to be a Philadelphia sports fan. Uh, the Phillies just um, took it to the six games in the World Series. I actually, I... I was at game three and you saying um, God bless America. Um, luckily I was at that game. That game, it was an amazing game. The other two um, didn't, didn't go so well, but nobody thought we were going to stretch it six games with a, a team like the uh, Houston Astros. And that team was, that team was stacked um, on the pitching staff, but yeah, it's easy being a Phillies fan right now. It has, hasn't always been that way. So um, it's easy being a Philadelphia sports fan across the yeah, board. Exactly. I, I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah. It's easy to be yeah. a Philly fan. Yep. The, uh, Absolutely. You know, between the Sixers, the Eagles and the Phillies. Uh, and the amazing thing about that Philly season is nobody expected us to get there. Right. I mean, we're expected to be a, a decent team, a wild card team. And then we'll see what happens in the playoffs. Maybe we could win a game or two. But my God, they really came together. Our bats came together. And now the Eagles, um, who I think preseason, the Eagles were projected. I think the over under was like nine and a half. Yeah, wins. it was. It was nine and a half. Yeah. And here we are at the NFC championship game. I mean, it, it's it's really unbelievable against a backup quarterback from San Francisco. I mean, I yeah. like our chances. I, I like our chances, too. Um, we're, we're at the link. Uh, like we said, there's nobody, no sports fans like Philly. Um, the other team's not going to feel welcome. They're going to hear it. And uh, yeah. I don't think they know yet what they're in for. Um, oh, they have no idea. Have you seen these videos? I, I just saw this video of, of uh, you know, this nice lady in from San Francisco. She's like, oh, I just got a, a turkey cheese steak, you know, because oh. I, I can't, I don't eat re regular beef and I'm, I'm planning, I'm going to the game and I'm hoping, you know, the fans are going to be nice. They don't, <laughs> they, they have no idea what they're in for no, coming into, no. coming into our home. You know, it's, yeah. it's going to be a tough atmosphere to, uh, to play in and um, we're riled up. And the other thing about this Eagles team is I think, you know, on, it's a complete team. Yeah. You know, uh, on all, all aspects of the game, our offense is there, our defense is there. Um, we're, we weren't one of the highest ranked uh, on special teams, but our special teams is, is, is still decent, competitive. Uh, so I, I think we, we got a good shot in this game. And, and you know, then if we make it to the, to the big dance, uh, we've got a good shot there as well. Yeah, absolutely. A well-balanced team. And, and, there's a lot of really good leaders on the team. So I think uh, when you have a well-balanced team and then you have a couple guys that are kind of leading the whole charge, I think it's a, it's always a, a great thing. Um, why don't you tell um, the audience a little bit how we can um, 
listen to the Eagles, uh, your Eagles rendition and also your your album um, when it's coming out, if you know, and um, how we can find that. Absolutely. Out. Yeah. So my the, the uh, Eagles fight song, Fly Eagles Fly, I, I released as a single. Um, it's under the title Eagles Victory Song, which is a, its official name. And you can okay. find that on iTunes. You can find it on Spotify, Pandora, um, basically anywhere where you'd go to, to consume your, your music. You can find that as a single. And okay. it, it, you're going to see a picture of me and it's going to say, you know, High Hopes, which is the, the name of the album. And um, that album is going to be released on opening day of the Philadelphia Phillies, April 6th. Oh, okay. um, so I'm going to be there singing the uh, home opener. And yep. uh, that's going to be the release date of the album as well, fittingly, uh, on opening day uh, for the Phillies then. And, and that's that album is just awesome. It has songs that, you know, my dad loved that uh, we grew up listening to. Um, you of course have high hopes on there, Eagles victory song, take me out to the ball game. Um, and then other songs that he would just sing, walk around the house, you know, on the way to Cape May, all stuff yeah. that's related to the tri-state area or Philadelphia. And, and for that reason, I used all local talents, all local musicians. That's great. Um, some unique about this album, unlike almost all, uh, albums and music, uh, generated today, they use synthetic um, some parts of the of the instrumentation are synthetic. Synthetic okay. strings is is normally the most common because getting you know uh, violinists is, is very expensive. I didn't do any of that. I have all real instrumentalists, and I wanted to really do it you know as as a tribute to to Philadelphia and as a tribute to um, you know the tri state area in general. Just hiring a bunch of local talent and man, that the musicians rock. It's awesome. You got to check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I will definitely check it out. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to. Um... Definitely a Philly, Philly's home opener. Um, yeah. And you could go to canecalis.com. You can actually pre-order yourself either the uh, CD or uh, there's going to be vinyl as well. So you can go on there under the store tab and uh, pre-order it. And, and then it'll get to you um, by April 1st, five days before its official release. Okay, great. Yeah. And it does sound like, yeah, it's going to resonate with, with the uh, Philadelphia tri-state area. Well, um, we saw that. Um, I don't know if you saw the Eagles, a couple of few of the Eagles players did a uh, Christmas album. So awesome. I think they threw a couple, a couple, um, a couple of Christmas songs, holiday songs, and that sold out in like minutes. It was a, it was actually surprising. I don't, I don't know if you've, you've heard any of the songs, but surprising hearing the, those voices. Uh, Jordan those Mulata, linemen can sing. Yeah, jo Jordan Mulata is like, what is he, like everybody's saying that football is his second job because how good of a singer he is. It's actually, it was actually a really. <laughs> That's um, true. He's a he's a natural born uh, counter tenor. Yeah, he's, he's he's got a great he's got a great voice. Yeah, yeah, he does. And and I think um, something good about our area and all the tri-state areas, people kind of come together and uh, help other Philadelphians out, if you want to call it that. Uh, so when when you're saying it resonates with the area, I think um, fans will appreciate that. And, and I'm sure it'll it'll do well. Um, so jumping off the, the music for a little while, you are a um, pretty successful um professional poker player that's what you've been doing mainly with with your time i know i know you did some musicals um yeah. i guess after college or before college but but mainly um i've seen you on tv a few times uh playing poker i've seen you on tv actually um hosting uh poker tournaments as well yeah absolutely so i started playing poker um full time when i was 18 years old i was okay. a freshman at university of miami and uh, i was playing online poker and uh i rose in the ranks really quickly so that by the end of my freshman year at college, I was playing the highest stakes games online. I was, I was playing uh, 500, 1000 blinds. The name of the game was rail heaven. It's some of the best players in the world. And um, the rest was kind of history. I I've uh, done it ever since I I've never missed a world series of poker ever since I turned 21. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, I've cashed in the world series poker uh, main events um, five times at this point. So wow. um yeah. Awesome. So yeah. it's uh, it's in my blood. And at this point, I've you know, when I started out, I was only playing heads up, no limit hold'em. So I, okay. I would sit online and my strategy was just kind of to wait around for players who were less experienced, who didn't have as many hands online. Back then, there were websites where you could track how many hands people have played mm -hmm. and how the results have been. And I would kind of wait for guys who hadn't played as many hands and didn't have as good results. And uh, back then you could do that. And today, to be a professional poker player, you really can't just target on one specific game yeah. or a one specific player type you got to be good across the board so um i next learned pot limit omaha and uh i 
or actually before Pot Lemon Omaha, I learned how to play six max and nine handed no limit hold'em. Then I learned Pot Lemon Omaha, and now you know I play basically every form of poker. Right? Okay. I started to get into mixed games about five years ago, and so now when I go to the World Series of Poker or you know any poker room across the world, I, I basically just say, you know, what's the biggest game you have, and I I sit in that and and can can play that. So uh, it's been it's been a hell of a ride, and uh, there's you know there's nothing like playing poker, sitting across from people, and really kind of putting together their tendencies, getting a read on what they're doing and, uh, wow. and taking advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I mean, I, I, like you, I played a lot of poker in college. Um, about two years after I graduated, it was, the, was the black Friday, uh, thing came, but then Jersey was one of the first States to, uh, have the online poker and it kind of, um, popped up again, which was, which was nice. I, I played here and there, but you're right. Poker online poker changed a lot. Um, there's a lot more people, a lot more skill sets, um, uh, a lot more grinding, I, I guess you could say, you know, you had kind of had to kind of had to grind a little bit. So um, that's actually when I moved well. back to Jersey is when they opened online there about six months or a year after they they reopened online because I uh, the Department of Justice clamped down on online poker, um, mm -hmm. which was called Poker's Black Friday. Yep. When I was in college, I was actually uh, in my junior year of college, at the University of Miami, and I had to make a decision whether I wanted to stay and finish my degree or whether I wanted to go overseas and, and, and play poker. And I chose the latter, and I'm glad I did. I, I dropped out of college, moved first to Costa Rica to play, and then later to Malta. And then once poker came back to the United States, I, I went back and uh, lived in Cherry Hill and, and played online in Jersey and then went to Borgata on the weekends. In, in sports, you bet on yourself, and, and, and it worked out for you. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Think, yeah. yeah, yeah. Apparently, I'm still an inactive status student at University of Miami, so maybe I'll go back at some point. But it seems, you know... If, I'll tell you what, sometimes I miss the weather out there. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'm here in my, I live in Puerto Rico now and I'm here in my house in Puerto Rico. I still, still spend a ton of time in Philly, but right now I'm in Puerto Rico. I'm going to be watching the, the game out here and uh, I'll be rooting for those birds. And then in the other game, I'll, I'll be, you know, assuming that the, the birds uh, pull through against the Niners, I'll, I'll be rooting for the Bengals. I think they're going to be, they'd be a little bit of an easier opponent. They they know how to lose the Super Bowl. Um, they've done it before, so uh, they'd be a little bit of an easier opponent, I think, than uh, than Andy Reid and Mahomes and the and the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, I I was going back and forth. I like the Bengals, um, but I, I would like to see Andy Reid in the Super Bowl. But but Sprint. I think it's all going to come down to um, Mahomes' injury. It, it, how bad he is, his ankle really is. Um, and I think yeah. we're going to see it early in that game and that Bengals. Chiefs game we're going to see if he's hobbled or, or whatever if he's healthy I think the Chiefs I think the Chiefs win it uh yeah. but but if he's if he's hurting a little bit the Bengals do have a chance especially Andy Reid's you know he's so good at game planning right yeah. he's so good at game planning he's so good at at just keeping the ball in his offense's hands running down the clock and yeah. it, it I think it would be a tougher game you know obviously Zach Taylor since being in Cincinnati has done an amazing job, right? But we don't have a de over a decade of uh, data where yeah. he's just this incredible game manager, especially on bye week or especially with time to prepare. And that's what would concern me if it were in Eagles. Of course, you know, first we got to beat the Niners. But if we get there, if it were an Eagles Chiefs Super Bowl, for example, you know, Andy Reid's just been in that spot so many times. Yeah. And um, Nick Sirianni is a, a less experienced head coach. But I'll tell you what, man, he's, he's done an amazing job with with this yeah. uh, team. And I, I was very surprised to hear that he's not really in the consideration for Coach Deer because I think yeah, he should be a strong consideration. If you had to make a prediction for tomorrow's game, Eagles game, um, what do you what do you think? What do, what do you think will happen? I think I think we're going to see a uh, surprisingly low scoring game tomorrow okay. that the the Niners defense is really stout something that encourages me is the last game uh Brock Purdy he looked a little bit a little bit hesitant and uh when I say that specifically when he was about to take a hit what you'll mm -hmm. see is great quarterback you know the Tom Brady's of the world the great quarterbacks who, who can lead their team to Super Bowls they'll just stand in there take the hit and still yeah. make a great throw Purdy was kind of throwing off his back foot a little bit. Now, that, this isn't yeah. taking any, this isn't taking anything away from him as a QB. Something that Purdy does great, especially for a rookie, is yeah. get the ball out of his hands quickly. And that's a rare trait for a rookie. A lot of these kids come from college, and when they're in college, they can kind of scramble around, make something happen, hold on to the ball forever. Brock Purdy's not that. So when uh, Jimmy G went down and Brock Purdy went in, I was watching the game, and I 
immediately told the people I was watching with, I'm like, this guy's going to be good because he was getting the ball out of his hands in you know, yeah. one second, one and a half seconds. So he still has that. But with the Eagles pass rush and with the Eagles uh, a secondary, I think he's going to struggle. And then on the flip side, I think we're going to have a, a little bit more success against the Niners defense, but they're the number one defense in the league. So mm-hmm. I, I'm expecting a low scoring game. I'm going to say Eagles win this by a field goal. Okay. Yeah, I, I could see that. Um, I do think the Eagles have the advantage. Like you said, Purdy has been great this year, but he l- started looking like a rookie quarterback. He started, there was t- a rookie tendencies in that last game. And um, I think they haven't faced a defensive line like the Eagles yet. Um, so I think that's going to, it's going to bring those rookie tendencies out more when they face the Eagles. So I think, yeah, I mean, the Niners, I totally agree wouldn't, with you. The, the, liner, the Niners wouldn't have won that game if Dak wasn't throwing to, to San Francisco secondary all day. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> if yeah, Dak, Dak wasn't was trying awful. to throw picks. Then yeah. it would have been a totally different game. Yeah, he looked right? he looked bad that game. Um, so that 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 last game does encourage me, and especially especially the way we showed up against the Giants. But you yeah, know, Gi- the Giants and the Niners are totally different. Absolutely, <laughs> they're yeah. they're in a different league, right? I mean, yeah, the, absolutely. The Giants it was, it was a little bit fluky for them to very to fluky. get to where they got right. Absolutely. Um, it required a lot of a lot of good luck during the regular season, right? Them winning the close games. Uh, the Niners, on the other hand, I think had the second best uh point differential in the regular season after the bills uh so you know they're tough they're tough on all yeah, on all sides of the are. ball and um I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna say we're gonna get a 20 to 17 victory okay all right that's a good prediction um last question have you ever considered i know you do some poker broadcasting i don't know if you've done sports broadcasting in your in your lifetime you, you've done so so many things in your uh short life here what um have you ever thought about doing sports broadcasting? Is that something that you that you kind of maybe wanted to do and then just said, you know, I'm not gonna Yeah. I mean I've always I've always loved uh broadcasting, commentating. Um yeah. I've done it a lot for poker. Yeah. Uh you know, basically at at all levels for the World Series Poker, World Poker Tour. And I did a little bit of sports casting at University of Miami, but okay. then after that, you know, I traveled overseas and uh was playing poker full time for a living. So I haven't really come back to it, but it's definitely something I've always uh, I've always enjoyed doing, and it's not something I'm going to going to uh, rule out uh, for the awesome. future. But yeah, definitely for now, I'm I'm still playing poker. I, you know, my primary thing now is investing, um, and uh, then of course the the album. I've been I put so much work and time into into this album and into my craft, and uh, I think that the people are really going to enjoy. It. You know, we have we don't really have too many. Um, too many outlets for this, you know, these standards, this, this old kind of classical kind of music, you know, the Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, that sort of thing. Yeah, and I really, really love that stuff. I really love the big band stuff. And there are so many people who do love it. And I yeah. really want to bring it back and, uh, and repopularize it. So uh, if, if you're into that thing at all, uh, either that or classical music, you know, check it out because it's, uh, it'll be right up your alley. You'll love it. Yeah. I totally agree with the, with the, uh, the old style of music. I do, I do like that style. Um, and I think more people that, that haven't listened to it, if they would give it a try, they would see night and day of the, some of the music here today and some of the music uh, that you heard back then. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I want to, I want to thank you for jumping on. Hope everybody goes out and buys the album. If you want to tell everybody once more how to get it and, um, and how. Yeah. So you can go ahead and pre-order the album right now on canecalis.com. Uh, if you pre-order it, you'll get it about five days before its official release. You can get it in either CD form or vinyl form. Okay. And um, then once the album is released on Philly's opening day, we're hoping we're going to be selling it uh, at the Philly Stadium, um, oh, as awesome. well as uh, general places where you can where you can purchase music. Um, we'll do well keeping anyway. my fingers crossed for a couple other places. Maybe we can get it into Wawa. We'll see. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't see why <laughs> they would would say no to that. I mean, I think. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be a big sell. So um, again, thank you for, um, for jumping on here. Um, Go Eagles. And um, I'm sure I'll see you at the uh, home opener of the Phillies game. All right. Let's go Eagles.